All right, we are pressing forward in our Distillery War shootout. Which one of these whiskeys will be best? Let's find out. Hey everybody and thank you so much for joining me today here on Blind Whiskey Reviews. As I mentioned, we are pressing forward in our Distillery Wars shootout with our workhorse whiskeys. As I've continued to mention, there will be a link to the playlist for this entire series up here. That way if you aren't caught up and you're just catching this for the first time, you can go back and check out the original reviews and the original shootouts so you can see how we got to where we are today. Um, I also definitely check out, and I will link it by itself up here, the video where I describe how we did this shootout and how we set it up. That way you guys kind of have an idea of what's going on. And I'll keep saying this too. These numbers do not correlate to the numbers we've used previously, so these are not the same whiskey. So let's figure out which one of these whiskeys is best right now. Starting with the nose. Number one's got a good nose. It's a little spicy, it's a little sweet. You got some light fruit. You got some brown sugar, some caramel, some vanilla, some citrus. Nice little pop of oak in the back. A little bit of like a spiciness to go with a little cinnamon, like a um, cinnamon spice or like allspice, that kind of thing. Number three. A little bit different, a little bit darker, a little bit richer, deeper notes. You got like that black cherry. Dark brown sugar, plum, vanilla. It smells pretty sweet too. It smells very similar to a whiskey we nosed in another one of these, but that whiskey didn't taste anything like that. So hopefully this whiskey tastes like it smells. Let's get on to the taste. Cheers. Very similar to the nose. Light fruit up front. Quickly over the mid palate, you're getting some of that cinnamon spice, some of that brown sugar, vanilla. Some of those bitter oak tannins as it kind of traverses over to the back of your palate. Back of the palate, you're left with a little bit of bitterness, a little bit of sweetness. It's kind of nicely balanced in that point. Definitely some proof on this. This feels like one of our higher proof offerings up at that 100 proof range. All right, let's get a little water and move on to the next one. This one smells fantastic. Yeah, dark, rich flavors. Again, very similar to what we named on the nose. So we've got some of that plum, black currant, black cherry, lots of sweetness. Not overly sweet. I mean, there's a nice oaky tannic bitterness to kind of balance you out towards the back, but definitely very good. Well balanced. This is going to be an incredibly difficult shoot. I can tell you already. Mid palate, you've got a couple of those more standard bourbon characters, the dark brown sugar. There's definitely like some leather in this, some tobacco. Finishes off really well balanced. A hint of sweetness with some nice bitterness to just kind of keep it even, keep it from being cloying. Good mouthfeel, nice long finish. So this is gonna be a monster of a shootout. This has to be our winner's bracket, this has to be. So um, both these whiskeys are tasting fantastic. And as we have been doing in all the other videos, I'm going to speed this section up. I'm going to go back and forth, take some more tastes. When we come back, I will give you my notes and tell you which one I think is the winner. And I have a feeling this is going to be a really difficult one. So I'm very excited to get into these whiskeys. So we'll be back in a second. All right, this has been an incredibly difficult shootout. So 
the criteria we've kind of been going with up until now was complexity, power of the flavor, balance. You know, those are kind of the three things I'm really looking at. And like I said, because there's a little bit of an advantage for the higher proof whiskeys in this shootout, um, I really wanted to kind of take the power of the flavor out of it and really kind of focus more on the balance and complexity of the whiskey and how those whisk and how those flavors really work with each other. These guys really just hit all the marks on both of them. They're very different whiskeys, but they're both very good in all those categories. So they're both powerful in flavor. I mean, I feel like these are both up in the 100 proof range. Um, this one drinks easier than this one does. This one has a, a little hint of a bite to it. This one is very smooth. It is very easy drinking. Um, nice long finish, deep rich characters. Over here, we're a little bit brighter, a little bit lighter in terms of the flavors, but there's there's a same, I mean, complexity wise, these guys both have a ton of complexity. They go, they go in different directions. This one stays more deep and dark and rich. While this one goes off into like light fruits, standard bourbon characters and a good amount of spice here. They're both fantastic whiskeys. I'm really torn as to which one to pick. <sighs> I mean, I would say based on the slight bite I'm getting here and the little bit more ease of drinking that I'm getting here, but like I said, it doesn't, just, it doesn't have that bite to it. It has the same amount of flavor, but it just doesn't have that, that little harshness to it. It has a little bit longer finish. So reluctantly i am moving number three on as the winner so you guys can see on the screen what those were i have no clue but number three moves on number one i feel like this has to be one of our winners brackets these both of these whiskeys are so good so i would assume that number one will be moving on in our losers bracket to compete for another chance to win the title of the best workhorse whiskey so I may be wrong on that. I don't know where we are in this whole thing, but that would be my guess because both these whiskeys are fantastic. So anyways, let me, know, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Did I get this one right? Did I get it wrong? Uh, <laughs> it could go either way. I, I can't, this one is so razor thin. I, I just can't, I could easily have chosen number one and not been upset about it at all. So anyways, let me know what you think in the comments down below. As always, you can catch me on Instagram and Twitter at blind underscore reviews. You can catch me on at Instagram at Mission Bottle Kill, where I'm posting pictures of people killing all kinds of great bottles of whiskey. You can also send me an email at blindwhiskeyreviews, that's whiskey with an E, at gmail.com. And until next time, cheers.